All right. Good afternoon, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here after a long, 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 long time and long uh, fought battle and journey to get here. Uh, to Councilman uh, Conway, the sponsor of this package of uh, legislation, if you don't know, uh, whoever is the council person in Northeast is destined and, and by duty has to take up this mantle. So thank you, sir, for taking the baton across the finish line. Uh, we also have with us, of course, uh, our fabulous chief equity officer, uh, Dana Morris, with us yeah. with us today. Our police commissioner, Rich, Rich Worley, is with us today. Our Director Mavronis from Monsi is here today. Our LCAP co-chair, Shia Parker, is here today. Uh, let's see if I missed. Oh, Councilman Cohen is here. Councilman in the back, that's all for elected officials. All right, great. Uh, and last but certainly not least, all this big crew of advocates that you see here today because their dedication uh, to this cause was crucial uh, for, to getting us here today. We're joined today by representatives from ACLU Maryland, Jewish for United Justice, Citizens Policing Project, the Legal Defense Fund, and others. And we are proud to stand here together today as I prepare to sign City Council Bill or City Solicitor City Solicitor Ebony Thompson, congratulations. Uh, uh, bills 23-445 and 23-449 into law, which will close out the decades-long fight for our city to regain the same control that jurisdictions have over their police departments, not just in Maryland, but across the country. A city council bill 445 will allow the voters of our great city to efficiently enshrine the Baltimore Police Department into our charter as an instrument of the city of Baltimore, which is the case for all other city agencies. And city council bill 449 transfers the provisions of public local law, which can only be changed through action by the General Assembly to our city code. This means that it's no longer the case that someone not even elected by the voters of Baltimore City has a say over how our police department function. And as someone who spent a lot of time in Annapolis trying to pass bills like police redistricting and other only to have state delegates and senators say, why did you guys just do this locally? We know that this is long overdue. I'd like to express uh, my gratitude to the members of the LCAP for their dedication in helping us to get to a point where local legislation could be drafted, introduced, and passed by our city council. Again, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to Councilman Conway for his dedication in bringing forth this crucial legislation. And as I said, uh, taking the baton and taking us across the, the finish line at the legislative process. This has been a long road to get here. And by collaborating with these folks in these community organizations that you see here, the folks in my administration and city government, we have played a, played a pivotal role in crafting bills that align with our shared values addressing the pressing need for Baltimore to regain control of our police department. Uh, the collaboration we undertook itself should not go unnoticed. And no, it wasn't uneventful, but that's great. That's what <laughs> democracy is about. I thank uh, Councilman Conway for his leadership, and I look forward to seeing the positive impact that this legislation will have on the great city of Baltimore and our police department. But it would not be me if I didn't walk you through a brief history lesson of how we got here today. Uh, just briefly, in 1860, about 164 years ago, the state of Maryland seized control of the police department and enshrined it as a state agency. Uh, we all know uh, that there was this couple of incidents when people in Baltimore, including the city council and the mayor, were thinking about trying to kill a president, right? That kind of craziness. Yeah. So uh, not until 1976, after intense lobbying, uh, did the General Assembly uh, return the power of appointing the police commissioner to the mayor of Baltimore. However, the authority to pass laws that govern the police department still remain with the General Assembly. Fast forward uh, to January the 9th of 2012, a young man by the name of Brandon Scott tried to introduce a piece of legislation into the city council where I asked that the police department by ordinance uh, share all crime statistics, data statistics online for everyone to see, only to be told by uh, Solicitor Thompson's predecessors that it was illegal for me to do so because it was a state agency. And that's uh, for me where this fight began because I thought it was ridiculous that a state senator in Frederick County or Allegheny County could actually pass laws on our Baltimore Police Department 
but we couldn't hear locally in the city council. We couldn't mandate by law that body cameras uh, should be worn by a police officers. We couldn't mandate that we redistrict our police districts for the first time in 60 years here locally. And we saw how long it took us to get that through in Annapolis. And that started this journey uh, for us to get here today. During the 2021 legislative session, uh, we partnered with Senator McCray and Delegate Wells to introduce uh, uh, return local control of police legislation to Baltimore and Annapolis. That legislation required the establishment of a local control advisory board to advise on the recommendations for a path forward of codifying BPD locally. We appointed members to that board in late summer of 21, and they quickly got to work, albeit during uh, the pandemic. The work that they had to undertake was novel, and in the state of Maryland, no other jurisdiction had been in that situation that Baltimore found itself in, a jurisdiction without authority over its own public safety agency. Uh, the Local Control Advisory Board has now completed its work and provided guidance to the City Council Council, which uh, they eagerly took up in order to pass the two bills that are here before us today. Following today's bill signing, there are two small but significant steps that remain. First, the General Assembly must take action to remove a section of Article 2, uh, Section 27 of the, Baltimore, uh, of the Baltimore City Charter. Second, the voters of Baltimore must approve the ballot measure outlined in 23-445. Once uh, those two actions have been completed, the city of Baltimore will once again have full control over its police department and authority not granted to the city in over 144 years. I want to make sure that we all collectively celebrate and recognize this moment and the hard and persistent work that has gone into getting here. But I also want to recognize that with this new authority, we will be working harder uh, than ever to ensure that we're passing meaningful legislation in Baltimore to assure that our police department is operating at the highest level of integrity and responsibility uh, to the residents that they serve each and every day. And also, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, uh, mention uh, Mark Washington uh, from CHUM, who actually was there in the beginning uh, with me as a part of a group of, of community leaders that were helping me with that piece of legislation. With that, I will turn it over to Chairman Conway. Chairman Conway. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> and e excellent job. Um, excellent job, once again, kind of walking through the history of how we got to this moment. Um, over 160 years, 164 years we've been waiting for this moment. Um, and I couldn't say uh, without um, more confidence that we are ready once again to bring the police department back into Baltimore City's full control. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, your partnership uh, and uh, the work that you have put in well before I ever got here as a councilman uh, and even more as mayor to help us get to this point today. Um, there are a lot of folks here up, up here today that, that made this a possibility. Um, and I really want to thank each and every single one of you guys for making this a possibility. Um, this is a big, big moment. Uh, a big moment for our city, uh, and I think hopefully um, uh, one that will get us a step closer. I know we have two steps to go, um, two relatively simple steps, but two really important ones. Um, one, to have voters uh, finally, uh, unquestionably, uh, make it clear what they want to see out of, out of control for our police department, and finally for our, uh, for our state um, to strike a very simple line uh, that would give us the authority to, to write laws on our police department, as we should always have the authority to do. So really, really excited for this moment, and Mr. Mayor, to do it uh, at your side uh, and with your partnership, and um, you know, hopefully to advocate in, in, in Annapolis with you to see this all the way to the finish line. Um, you know, it's a big day for Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we'll hear from our Chief Equity Officer, Dana Moore. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess what I'd really like to start with the thanks. Uh, a day like this doesn't happen, a moment like this doesn't happen with a whole lot of hard work. And it's not just the, those that struggled and suffered and wondered and worried how we, could we get control of our police department for 164 years, but those advocates that are Sorry. really to my left um, that Sorry. knew and right, my left and my right, <laughs> and in front of me, some of you even, <laughs> out in the hall, um, who really uh, questioned how can we get this done and, and just never gave up the fight. Uh, thank you for, for staying with it and staying in it. I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, not just for what you did as a really young person uh, recognizing the wrongs of having to ask other jurisdictions to take care of Baltimore, but for your staying in the fight 
and for your uh, leadership and your advocacy and for asking me to do this. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It's been quite an honor uh, to do this work. Uh, to Ashia Parker, my co-chair, um, uh, we really kind of divided the labor uh, and there was a lot. There was a lot of work to do and uh, you've just been a marvelous partner in, in this work. There's a person who's not here who uh, also gets a lot of things. His name is Ben Guthorn, and he works in the Department of Legislative Reference. And there are just a, a lot of quiet soldiers that toil and work and worry. And it was Ben Guthorn that really navigated us or helped us navigate the really choppy, weird, winding waters through the legislative process. And uh, I think he is just a really brilliant person. He did a, a wonderful job. So thank you to all of you, to those that are not here. Um, Y'all know I'm a grandmother. I have a granddaughter who is 17 who is just sort of like my heart uh, walking around outside of my body. And uh, she always asks me, how was your day, Grandma? And what did you do, Grandma? And it's really just a wonderful, and I cannot tell you how wonderful it is when a young person really asks you, how was your day? And today I'm going to be able to say to her um, and into the future generations to my three grandsons, when they ask, what, Grandma, what did you do to make Baltimore better? I can honestly say, that I did all that I could to make Baltimore better by helping return its police department into its own hands. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. And before I sign the bills, I again, I have to lift up the folks that we are, have here standing with us because uh, we don't do this work alone. And oftentimes the folks that are advocating, uh, that are pushing us, that are challenging us, don't get the recognition that they need. But these folks that you're standing with us today uh, she's standing with us today, have been in this fight every single step of the way. And when they look back on the history of Baltimore and look back at this moment, it's not just going to be me or the councilman uh, and the folks in Annapolis, but really that these folks were in that fight. And, and we want those folks who are looking at this video in some hologram some 140, 64 years from now uh, to know that these people uh, mean the world to me, but to Baltimore, because they helped the fight to get this and right this wrong. So thank you. And also, uh, just thinking back to that original piece of legislation and who, uh, someone who we lost uh, uh, last year who helped me uh, think about this in a, in a wider way, who helped me write that original piece of legislation, Avery Eisenstark, who literally said, it's stupid uh, that you guys don't, that you guys can't do this. So uh, thank you, Avery, for all your help and support through the years as well. And with that, I will move to signing the bills. Councilman. I got to check the date. You guys know I don't know the days. <laughs> yeah. the charm, charm takes the days away from me. Mm -hmm. One. That's two. There it is. <laughs> Questions before we move to the picture table? Yeah. Okay. Two really. Uh, as recently as last month, uh, Councilman Conway was asked uh, if the city finally has control, and he said that it's a BPD is technically a city agency, but the city council still can't write laws because of the city charter. As of today, is that now different? No, no. As I, we said, that now that we have signed these, uh, that will now trigger the action in, in Annapolis to remove that last portion that the councilman and I were talking about, so that we can. Without unequivocally, it'll be the responsibility will be at the local level. That's right. Okay. And then just to give a tangible example, example. to the viewers. If, I'll, give you, I'll if, give you a bunch of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, if, uh, so if the city didn't have uh, body-worn cameras, if the city council wanted to implement them today, could they, they could. do that today? We've been there before. So I was on the city council. Actually, I was the only council member involved in the, the body camera task force that was created. Even though we voted uh, a bill, uh, into we did that for to be honest to just prove the point about how ridiculous this is we voted on a bill that would require uh, the police department to wear body cameras but that bill is illegal because only Annapolis can pass it redistricting for example that every single mayor in my lifetime said that they were going to do they never could do it because 
Annapolis had to legislate that, and we went to Senator McCray to do that, right? We know uh, the initial bill that we were talking about, right? We know that the police department shares data all day, every day now, right? But that didn't happen by law. Uh, these things uh, should be in law and in place here in Baltimore so that when all of us are gone, that it's a lot harder for folks to say, oh, I don't want the police department to wear body cameras. They would have to then come through the council, get that legislation changed. We shouldn't redistrict using, using data. We should just let the districts be out of whack in population for 60 years and everything will be fine, right? I'm being facetious, but that's what happened because we didn't do that. We shouldn't be sharing uh, public crime information out. People could actually try to do those things, but it's a lot harder if they have to go through the legislative process to change them. Can, can I yeah, add absolutely. a little more too? Is, uh, so Mr. Mayor is exactly right. Um, part of the problem here is now we technically have BPD as a city agency. It is technically a city agency, but um, there's a line within the city's charter that prevents the city council from like, writing laws that in any way govern uh, the responsibilities or powers of the police commissioner, yeah, right. which means we can't write laws. Uh, and so when we talk about that final step, that final step is to strike that line. No other jurisdiction in the state of Maryland, and I dare say in the, in the state of, in the country of the United States of America. One other one. One other one, all right. <laughs> one other one um, has that, that problem. So we need to fix that. We need to make sure that it's un, it's, uh, un, um, there's no uncertainty about the responsibility of passing legislation. That should be the responsibility of the Baltimore City Council. Um, and interestingly, the state can't do it anymore because it is a city agency. So it's just we're in this weird limbo that we want to make sure we clarify. So if the city council still can't do that as of today, those final two steps need to happen, what happens here today? What happens here today is we've written into our code an outline of what the police department, how it functions, and its responsibilities. Technically, once again, we can do that. Or we can, but it doesn't make any sense. Ultimately, um, the state has to strike that line that gives us the authority for this to actually matter. Um, so that last step must happen. And we, we have the utmost confidence that, that it will. Anybody else? Can I add one? Yeah, Dan, go ahead. So the one thing that we, we really want um, your viewing public to know is that we need them. This will be a ballot question um, in, uh, I guess, November. And we will, you know, technically the work of the LCAB is done, but we're going to stay together and we're going to be pushing and educating and letting the public know why they should vote for that ballot question when it comes forward. And it's really just to finish this process. And um, so be looking for that. Uh, there's not, we're almost done, <laughs> but not quite. Thank you.